Hello everyone and welcome to another Distress Oxide colour combination video. Now today we're looking at dried marigold. Excuse the state of my um, ink pad, I've obviously put some other mixed media things on top at some point. But dried marigold is a lovely creamy, um, bit almost peach colour, I guess that's the best way, apricot peach colour, it's beautiful. Um, so we're going to start off as always with this series, blending this colour and having a look at what it looks like when it's actually on white paper. We're also going to look at what other colours sit around it, so you can do your comparison with colours you already have or want to get. And then we're going to do a three colour and a four colour combination for you. So let's start first of all with uh, just blending dried marigold into some white cardstock. So just lots and lots loading up my brush because it's always going to stay on the brush, you're not wasting any. Um, the brushes, the blending mat, the clear blending mats that I use, and of course all the oxides all come from Craft Stash, and everything is linked below in the description, so you can find it all there for both the UK and US sites. There we go, look how creamy that is, it really is a beautiful pastel shade, isn't that stunning? So, so pretty. Now, as I've started doing with this series, we're going to look at what colours this also works with or sits around. And of course, it will blend nicely with all of these colours. Now, this is actually quite a unique colour because there aren't many colours that sit absolutely perfectly beside it. Now, with some colours, we say, do you know what? There's very little difference between A and B. But with this one, I mean, there aren't many that sit really, really closely. I suppose we're looking at these four. So Tattered Rose, Wild Honey, Carved Pumpkin and Ripe Persimmon. Now I suppose Wild Honey and Carved Pumpkin are kind of the closest but they're darker. This one has more of a yellow tinge, this more of an orange. Ripe Persimmon is still a coral orange colour but as you can see it's much more on the red side or even pink side. And Tattered Rose is a pink but it's because it's that pastel pale colour the labels actually look very, very similar, but as you can see there, they're not. Now I have swatched these for you as well. So you can see the four colors actually blended onto cardstock there. And then this is our dried marigold. So it sits quite closely to Tattered Rose. Not so much with Wild Honey and Carved Pumpkin when you're looking at the actual swatch rather than the labels. And then again, nowhere near bright persimmon but these are the closest so that just goes to show that actually dried marigold is very much a color on its own now i actually prefer personally dried marigold to tattered rose if i'm looking for a pastel kind of pinky peachy color because i find tattered rose a little bit too pale and in some lights on my card sometimes it can actually look almost white, very, very barely there. And I'm often layering up the ink and layering up and it just doesn't really show. It's lovely if you need a very subtle pink color or peachy color. But as you can see, uh, dried marigold is just that little more hint of color. And as you can see also the with Tattered Rose, the ink pad is actually quite misleading compared to when you blend it. So just taking a look again, quite misleading, but definitely more color with dried marigold. So hopefully that helps you with the colours you may think, well, actually, that's quite close to one I've already got. Probably not with this one, actually. So let's put that to us to the side and pop these to the side. So I'm going to go with this there and pop these away. So we've done our dried marigold. So let's go straight into our first colour combination. So we just need to wipe this off. Now I'm going to stick with this colour combination being... Uh, kind of tonal so it's going to be the same color but working through the depths of color so getting darker um, and I think this is helpful for you because it actually makes the easiest blending if you're just new to blending keeping within the same colors but different shades of almost uh, is a really nice way to start getting used to blending and then you can move on to blending totally different colors later on when you've got a bit more confidence so we've got our first layer our dried marigold laid down there and then I'm going to go in with Rusty Hinge, a beautiful brown orange colour. Again, as I said lots of times, this is one of my favourites at the moment. It's one that I never thought I'd need. Excuse the cars, I've got the doors open today so we can hear the birds. It's actually quite early in the morning, so um, we've got lots and lots of bird noises, but we also have people going to work as well. So just working that into the dried marrow. Look, I mean, that's taken virtually no blending at all. 
beautiful isn't it so stunning so that is rusty hinge into dried marigold and it may be that you'd just like to do a two color blend and that one will work perfectly for you nice and easy like i say if you are a beginner to ink blending that one's going to be a nice easy one for you to start with then i'm going to go into gathered twigs much much darker but it just totally it just works nicely so it's a little bit like when we add the um, black to the base of any almost any color for a shadow so it's dipped in shadow sort of thing this is going to work in the same way I'm not going to do too much in the gathered twigs I'm just going to fill in that end there I'm not going to blend with the brown I'm actually going to blend with the rusty hinge because as I've said in previous videos and if you haven't seen them please do go and check out the previous videos we're working through the entire distress oxide range alphabetically so if we're on to dried marigold or into the D's now we've got all the A's B's and C's you can already watch and lots of tips and techniques throughout so with this I'm going to take my lighter color which is my rusty hinge and blend into gathered twigs if I try to blend into the rusty hinge with gathered twigs I'm just going to keep moving more and more brown up into that and we're going to lose the color completely because it's a bit more overpowering so using what I've got on my brush at the moment I'm going in little circles just along that join line there and do you know what I think that's it I think we pretty much don't need to do any more now if you start then blending from here up into your rust the rest of your rusty hinge i'm just going to take any excess off here because i've got fingerprints on there but if you start going up and up and up blending more you're going to bring that brown up and then you're just going to lose like i say lose your um rusty hinge completely so back with gathered twigs not applying anymore and i'm just going to go in little circles just over that line there where the jo two join again just to make sure i haven't got any solid lines but there we go so that's dried marigold, rusty hinge and gathered twigs. Stunning. So, so pretty. So that is our first colour combination. Let's put these two to the side and let's move on to another one. A bit brighter this one. I'm bringing in probably an unexpected colour. I love to mix at the moment. I love mixing orange and blue. I just think they're stunning. Um, and this can be really feminine, masculine, for teenagers, for babies. You know, you can really go down any route with it. Let's start, let's start with, we should start with dried marigold. It's a lighter colour. So I'm going to start with this one and work our way down through. So dried marigold, a decent amount of that and just lifting up the brush, lightening the pressure towards the end so it fades out to almost nothing. That's going to help us with our blending. Then carved pumpkin, a lovely bright, really bright orange. So pop this down. So first of all, not going straight into the blending, I'm going into the white part where I want to make sure I've got that solid colour and then I'm going to lighten it up this end and then I'm going to just come back in with my dried marigold because I said before, if you've got a lighter colour going into a darker colour, you want to blend the lighter colour in, you don't want to blend the darker colour in. I just mentioned it actually with the gathered twigs, so similar technique, make sure you're bringing your lighter colour into your darker colour, otherwise you're just going to end up with too much of the darker colour because it's more overpowering and we can blend the two lines so again so similar if we look at this one we've got our dried marigold into our rusty hinge and now we've got dried marigold into carved pumpkin so if you want something a bit brighter but look at how different it makes the dried marigold both the same ink pads the rusty hinge makes it look more pink the dried marigold makes it look more orange so do consider what colours you're putting your inks next to, or your oxides next to. And by the way, all of these blends will work perfectly for distress inks as well, if you have inks rather than oxides. Okay, so now we're going into the blues. I'm going to go first into speckled egg. I've actually probably put a bit too much of the oranges down. I've gone way past sort of the halfway mark. So we'll just have a tiny bit of the dark blue on the end so again lighter color so i'm going to blend the lighter color up into do you know what that's almost done it that's, i haven't got to do much else with that have i um just go over make sure i've got a good amount of carved pumpkin in there in that center strip there we go look at that that was easy wasn't it speckled egg into carved pumpkin beautiful so let's bring i've got orange on here and i definitely don't want orange between my two blue blends so just remove that off of 
my clear blending mat. These blending mats are brilliant because it's not big, it's not taking up my work surface. These come in a pack of two. This is the six by six and it comes with an A4 uh, clear blending mat as well. Um, when you do receive them, if you purchase them, uh, there is a clear film on each one and you do need to just peel off the clear film before you use it. Uh, I've, I've got ahead and not realised it's on there and used it for weeks without realising and then thought, oh, and I've got a lovely clean mat again. It's not the end of the world, but you will find it'll it'll be clearer. There we go, if you take that, that film off first. It's a bit like when you have a phone or a device like that and you don't, or a camera lens or something, you don't realise you've actually had a film on there for weeks. So that is a lovely colour blend on its own, as you can see. Look at that, how fresh and I mean, pastel, baby colours, beautiful. But let's just darken it, let's deepen it, make it as striking with the Uncharted Mariner. So just working into the bottom here. Not too much because it's a very strong colour. So a little bit on my brush and working it in first of all. And then I'll apply, apply a little bit more and deepen the very, very end. Isn't that lovely? So pretty. And I'm going to just blend with my speckled egg again, just over that end line. Now I keep putting my fingers into the carved pumpkin, but that will. Look at that. Again, I'm feeling tropical with that, very much so. Doesn't matter whether you have it as that's the sky or the sea. It's just a beautiful colour blend, isn't it? Absolutely stunning. So we've got Uncharted Mariner, Speckled Egg, Carved Pumpkin and Dried Marigold. So all of these colour combinations here with Dried Marigold. Now again, if I put them to the top, exactly the same colour, can you see that difference? Just by putting them alongside different colours. So I'm hoping that this colour combination series will help you. If you didn't realise this was a series and you've just caught the single video, there is a full playlist on my channel. And that goes through each of the Distress Oxide colours. As I say, I'm working through it alphabetically, so we're now onto the Ds. There's about 15 or so videos there already. Each one has two colour combinations of three and four colours. But of course, within those, you've still got two colours, two colours, two colours, two colours, two colours. You've got three colours. You know, you've got lots of other little combinations worked into there as well plus tips and techniques. So I'd love it if you could subscribe, um, take a look at all the other videos, give this video a thumbs up if you like this colour, if you love it, and as always, if everything I've used, if you'd like to purchase any of it or go and have a browse, it's all linked down below. Thank you very much, everybody. I'll see you again very soon.